What's going on, football fans? Today is Friday, December 22nd, Festivus Eve, as my colleague pointed out. <laughs> He's Joe Soprano. This is Victoria Smolenak. She's not been on with us since the very beginning of this whole TL sports betting endeavor. And I, of course, am Kevin Carroll. Again, tlsportsbetting.com, your one-stop shop for everything you need for a great college football and pro football weekend. It's Christmas time. We've got some picks uh, up to this point, the picks have just been picks. This week, they're gifts. Josh. Gifts, so gifts, it... gifts that are going to enable you to go out and have a little bit extra spending cash on the uh, holiday, uh, or a little less, depending on how we do. Yeah, you, you might. Never you, know. That's yeah, what you, they call gambling. You might. <laughs> you might be in need of some uh, some giving. Yeah. If you don't, if these picks don't hit, but they're going to hit. Yeah, they're going to. They're going to well, hit. You know, and you lose. Maybe you go talk to the guy to get a bell, and you uh, get yourself a pot and set up outside. Maybe the like Walmart. Get yourself some extra money that oh yeah that always works that's a surefire way to, to jump up some cash uh we're gonna get to the nfl picks i know you have a, an nfl pick for us victoria but we're gonna do college first it's still bowl season i'm getting my butt kicked by bowl season but uh no better time than the present to get it straightened out why don't you start us off? let's start the armed forces bowl this is why i saw this line this is one of these games where i looked at it and said how could that line be that line they are giving money away james madison is only a one and a half point favorite over air force that big beeping sound you heard was Air Force backing into this ball. They collapsed down the end of the season. They were 8-0 at one point, in line for maybe a New Year's Six game, playing in the Armed Forces Bowl. I don't think they're going to be happy to be there. James Madison, on the other hand, didn't think they were going to get to go to a bowl game for most of the season. They're only there because there weren't enough teams that qualified uh, for bowl games, so they they got to go. because It's only their second year at uh, – FBS. I want to make sure I get that right. Yes. Level. You nailed it. I think they're going to go in there very inspired. I would like to support our servicemen, but I don't think Air Force stands. There, there's a there's a limit on support <laughs> yeah. for the for the servicemen. I, I, that's a good pick, Joe. I have a pick on that game as well, but you can see it in today's paper in my column every Friday morning. You pick up your paper, you get two additional picks in addition to what we get here. Uh, I'm going to go to the most prestigious bowl of the weekend, the SRS Distribution Las Vegas Bowl. Nothing screams football like the SRS Distribution Las Vegas Bowl. Northwestern, six and a half point underdogs against Utah. That game is 7.30 Saturday night. I like the Wildcats. If you think back to the beginning of the year, you would not have thought the Northwestern would be anywhere close to a bowl game with all the turmoil. They lose their head coach. Uh, nothing but chaos in that program to start the year. But they won seven games. It kind of helps they played in the, the Big Ten West, which is just a, a minefield. But uh, maybe not a minefield, maybe like a, a, just a wasteland. Yeah, minefield, minefield implies explosiveness. There's no explosiveness to be had in that division. The Big Ten West would make a good mid-major conference. Yes. Ah, yeah. Anyway, the uh, Wildcats, seven, seven wins. I think this game is going to be a grinded-out type of game. Not, neither offense is particularly impressive. Uh, Utah, obviously, they went pretty much the entire year without Cam Rising. They're a really good quarterback. They probably had ideas on maybe a bigger bowl game, perhaps a New Year's Six appearance. They're kind of they've kind of fallen down into this bowl. Not that, you're, not that you could fall into the SRS distribution Las Vegas bowl because it's the most prestigious bowl of the weekend. I'd rather play in that bowl than the national championship playoff. That's what many say. That is what oh, so many people have said that to me on the street recently. Like you know, the national championship is one thing, but the SRS distribution Las Vegas bowl is another entirely. Uh, but, yeah, Northwestern plus six and a half. I think that they're going to have more motivation. I think they're going to want to get up for this game. They're a little bit – neither team is too hurt by the transfer portal here. But Utah's missing a couple key pieces, including – and they're missing, I believe, their best defensive lineman got hurt and missed the last couple of games. So I think they're going to – I think it's going to be a close game. I think Utah probably wins by maybe two or three points, maybe a field goal at the end of the game. But I like Northwestern to cover here. I think they're going to cover. I think it's going to be a – very happy SRS distribution Las Vegas ball for the Northwestern Wildcats. Now we're going to kick it to the NFL. Victoria, why don't you start us off? I think you have a, a pick for the bird gang. Yes, Kevin, Joe, I'm going to have to go with the Eagles uh, minus 13. It is a home game um, against the New York Giants and a divisional game. Um, and I just think that with uh, the loss streak that the Eagles have been on, um, they are due for a bounce back game. And I think that they are finally ready yeah. to get a win this one. Yeah, it's a good spot for a get-right game for the Eagles for sure. And what we saw with the Giants last week, it looks like maybe the fairy tale ride's coming to an end for uh, the Italian stallion Tommy <laughs> DeVito. Interesting story about the Italian stallion. Tommy Cutlets. Just, Tommy Cutlets. Just that's today, right. he trademarked Tommy Cutlets and the oh. Pies on. 
Oh my God. Is he, is he, is he doing right for the Italian people or is he hurting the Italian people? Well, or and are we going to get in trouble I, for talking about it? I, 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 I don't think there has been a bigger Italian figure in that region True. of the country since my good friend and my uncle, Tony Soprano. Oh, man. Yes. We so, miss, I mean, you make of it what we you miss. You, we miss you, Tony. Okay, so, you, uh, so you've got the Eagles. Yes. I, I'll go next. I'm going to the Colts-Falcons game. I'm not picking a side. I'm picking the total. I'm taking the under. 44.5 points is the total here. It's one of the higher totals of the week for a game quarterback by two backups, which kind of threw me off at first. Gardner Minshew is playing well for Indianapolis. It's not you know, fair to say he's playing like a backup, but their offense hasn't been as good. Like their defense has been pretty good. Their offense has been pretty good, but they're facing a defense in Atlanta that's top 10 in scoring. They're only giving up about 19 points a game. On the other side of the ball, though, for Atlanta, you've gone from Desmond Ritter started the year, Taylor Heineke came in, they went back to Ritter, and now they're back to Taylor Heineke. It is an absolute crapshoot in that offense. They drafted a running back in the first round, Bijan Robinson, and they don't seem that concerned with getting him the ball, which is kind of crazy. And they have some good pass catchers, but again, when the quarterback play is so inconsistent, you don't know who's even going to be under center week to week. None of those guys like Kyle Pitts and Drake London can really get going. So their offense is, is, is struggling. I don't know how many points they're going to score here. I'd say less than 10. And so at that point, you need the Colts to score what, 30, 35 to go over. I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's, a, it's going to be a tight game because both these teams have playoff implications still. The Falcons play in the NFC South, which is pretty weak, so they could still sneak in and win the division. And the Colts are kind of in the mix there in the AFC South. With an interesting conference with Houston and Jacksonville. But I think that, yeah, I think this game probably goes way under the total, to be honest with you. I think the Colts win maybe like a 17-10 type of game. I think it might be compelling. It might be an interesting game. And if you're a fan of Taylor Heineke, I know that he's – over his years in the league, he's developed some fans. He's played some good games, but I, I don't think he's going to have a lot. It's, it's a tough spot to put him in. So I, I think the under 44 and a half is a pretty good pick. No, I've got a game with some backup quarterbacks in too. Take us Actually, home. I've got a game with a backup quarterback and a third string quarterback. Oh. The Bengals minus three at Pittsburgh. Yeah. This is another one of those lines I saw that I don't understand it. Jake Browning's playing very well for the Bengals, putting up good numbers. Mm-hmm. The Steelers' situation at quarterback is so bad, they turned to their third-string quarterback, Macon Rudolph. This was a guy who would not even be dressing earlier in the year when Kenny Pickett was healthy. So what does that tell you? Yeah. I say take the Bengals. I don't even have to talk a lot about this game because it's such an easy one to see. Take the Bengals. Take the points. Go out and get yourself something nice for Christmas before you're going to win. <laughs> it's tough when uh, your your biggest highlight as an NFL quarterback like Mason Rudolph's is uh, when you almost were killed by an opposing player. who only, Miles Garrett almost hit him with a helmet. Well, uh, I think after this game there might be some people in Pittsburgh wish that uh, Miles Garrett connected. So you're, you're saying it's not going to be a Merry Christmas it's, in Pittsburgh. It's not going to be a Merry Christmas in Pittsburgh. I think this one has a, a chance to get ugly. Well, it sure is a Merry Christmas here at the Times Leader, and it's going to be a Merry Christmas – Hopefully, for each one of you watching this video, taking our picks, again, everything you need for this weekend, for Christmas weekend, for New Year's weekend, for any weekend watching football, tlsportsbetting.com. We've got picks, predictions, insight, analysis, all sorts of things you need to get ready for the weekend. Uh, any last words for you guys before we let the folks go? Go Birds. Go Birds. No, I just want to wish everybody a, a Merry Festivus. And, you know, keep an eye on timesleader.com because I might do a video airing my grievances. Oh. Ooh. I think that'd be well watched. I think that would be well received as well. Yes. Again, from all of us here at the Times Leader, Merry Christmas and good luck this weekend. Thank you for watching. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.